When we think of the laws, there's classic Newtonian physics, laws of gravity, motion, friction, the things that are the, the everyday common things that we use in our, our life every day. There's also laws of magnetism, how magnets work, um, electricity, laws over electricity, electrons move, and then nuclear properties, the things that hold nuclei together that we explo exploit with nuclear physics, okay, and, and nuclear uh, weapons and so forth. All of these laws that I just described to you are fixed. All these laws that I just mentioned, these are fixed laws. Laws that are not compromisable. You understand what I mean by that? can't compromise with these laws. You can't negotiate with gravity. Uh, a Protestant, a Jew, and a Catholic all went to the top of the Empire State Building and jumped off. Did gravity treat them differently? Gravity doesn't play favorites. It treats them all exactly the same. There's no compromise. It doesn't matter your religious belief system when you look at these laws. Does it, does it make sense to people? Okay? Yeah, the, these, are, these are design laws. Non-negotiable. However, science has discovered in the last hundred years quantum physics. And quantum physics doesn't operate like Newtonian physics. Quantum physics is basically God's law encoded into reality that gives you freedom to choice. It really is what it is. In quantum physics, reality doesn't happen, isn't determined, until a sentient being makes a choice. And it's the choice of the sentient being that determines what the outcome will be. If you want to study this, you can just go look up quantum mechanics. For instance, a photon can either be a wave or a particle. And they can actually do studies, and it stays in an intermediate zone. Or it can be, it can be uh, the, the photon can be in, in one direction or another direction. They, they give a, a polarity to it, okay, which pole it's going at. But it actually states in, in a state of flux, in between which pole, until it's observed. And when the observer looks at it, the looking at it determines which pole it goes to. It just stays in an intermediate state until the observer looks. This is quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics also states that things are connected, quantum entanglement, that things are connected through time and space without physical connection. It doesn't matter how far it is away, there's a connection between the two particles. You affect the one particle, the other particle on the other side of the Earth has the same exact experience. It's also chaos theory. Yeah. So, this is actually biblical. This quantum mechanics is biblical when it talks about all of us are connected, one in Christ. We're all interconnected. Even though we're not physically connected, we're connected. There's a connection here. Now, what's interesting with this quantum stuff, and by the way, this is also how our prayers may actually be very much real and have real impact on people. Um, the computers we use, like my iPad and the computers you use, they, are, they operate on Newtonian physics. A ones and zeros, electricity, um, the very predictable laws upon which the universe works. Your brain structure with its blood flow and electrical signals and chemical reuptakes, this is very Newtonian fixes. But your mind, consciousness, which is really perplexed, and that's why we never really get truly artificial intelligence, consciousness seems to be working and your mind works on quantum physics. Okay? The ability to process information faster than the speed of light. And it's your decision making that ultimately will affect real world matter. So your thinking and the choices you make, what you choose, that's quantum aspect, when you choose, take an action, that is what determines what happens physiologically to your brain. As you make choices, that determines which neurons fire. That determines, and which neurons fire, determines electrical currents and pathways and, brave, and brain waves. And, and that will determine other physical cascades in your body, such as elevating or reducing uh, stress hormones, inflammatory cascades, and so forth. But what's deterministic is not the neurobiology directly, but the choice that you're making. Further, they did this interesting study I found quite fascinating. Anybody know what a Faraday cage is? A Faraday cage. Okay, a Faraday cage is basically a cage mostly made out of copper, usually. So it's, it's a copper cage, wires, in it, and, and the, the way it's designed, electromagnetic radiation, known as radio waves and other types of things, cannot penetrate it. So electromagnetic waves, radio signals and, and telephonic signals, and anything that we use in our modern communication can't penetrate. So you can be isolated from the world around you inside a Faraday cage. And they took individuals, two individuals, and they put them inside a Faraday cage together, and they had to meditate together 
where the two individuals working and meditating together formed a bond. They formed a connection. And then they separated them in different rooms inside separate Faraday cages. Okay? And they, the one person, they shined a light in that person's eye. And guess what? The brain changes that happen in the person, they can see when you shine a light in, all kinds of brain changes will happen. You fire certain neurons, you can see this functionally. The brain changes that happen in the person's eye that had the light shine in them, in the other person, in the other room, in the Faraday cage, the exact same brain changes were happening. Even though no light was shining in his eye. Um, but this is quantum stuff. And this answers questions like, have you ever actually, and there's been thousands, if not more, stories, real life stories, of an individual knowing something bad happened to a loved one. Really, you're communicating on a different level than an EM level, so they just got to figure out a different... This is quantum. This is quantum stuff. Quantum entanglement. Faraday cage is an EM shield. We, it's used in black right. boxes. And right. So it blocks... The point is, it blocks brain waves. Brain waves are electromagnetic. Yes. Brain waves are electromagnetic. You can measure those with electro... Okay. No argument. So, so that they were to communicate tells me that there's something other than an EM connection... That's right. That's the quantum connection that I'm, I'm pointing out here. They were quantum entanglement. Now, it's just very fascinating. This is how you can have prayers that can be impactful in another person's life because quantum mechanics travel instantly. It doesn't matter space or time, distances. It's faster than the speed of light. It's instantaneous. This is how your prayers can be actually impactful. In other words, I don't say impactful, I'm using the right word, but interactive with God in real time, no matter where he is in the universe. Isn't this fascinating stuff? Well, to, to, to take that a step further, won't they be interactive with the person you're praying for? Yes, yes. There's actually over 7,000 studies, I think, that have documented that, that prayer has a very positive physiological benefit on those being prayed for, even if they don't know they're being prayed for. And they've done studies in which they put people in two groups, and they don't tell the people which group they're in. They don't know whether they're getting prayed for or not getting prayed for. And those that are getting prayed for have significantly better health outcomes. Um, there's a lot of studies, tons of studies on this. Okay, how can this be? Because we are connected in ways that we don't fully even yet comprehend. Okay. Quantum, quantum mechanics is one way. This is part of, but the point is, there is a real scientific basis for the things you read in scripture. God constructed and built reality like this. Satan wants to disrupt that. So what we believe our, our sentientness, if you will, has a real impact on the reality of our own physical health and the world around us.